In the space of around a year and a half, we've seen a generative AI boom. It's hard to believe that ChatGPT, the software that arguably popularised generative AI, was only launched a little over a year ago. In an extremely short space of time, generative AI has become an often undesirable part of our everyday lives. Unfortunately though, as with most technologies, AI isn't without its consequences. For example, it often makes mistakes, perpetuates the biases present in its training data, and will, within the next few years or so, start taking jobs away from humans at a faster pace than it already is. There are ethical concerns around using data for AI training without the author's consent too. All of this means that AI is a technology to be avoided at any cost. Companies that embrace AI need to see a loss of business as a result of their choices. The problem is though, it's very hard to find software that doesn't have AI features. As far as I know, nobody has compiled a list yet. To try and rectify that, I'm going to tell you about several alternatives to popular software, such as your web browser, operating system, search engine, office suite, and creative software that don't have AI features, right now on the Linux Lounge. One of the most important pieces of software on your computer is undoubtedly your operating system. Unfortunately, however, Microsoft have recently added a bunch of AI features to Windows, including a rather creepy one in which an AI program watches over everything that you do on your computer. Apple also plans to integrate similar AI features into all of their operating systems with similarly concerning privacy implications. Even some Linux distros plan to add AI features. Fedora have already explicitly stated their intentions to add AI to their operating system, and the company behind Ubuntu, Canonical, have invested heavily into AI. So there's no doubt in my mind that both of these operating systems will have AI features in the near future. Not even open source software is free from this nonsense. This does unfortunately leave your choice of operating systems somewhat limited. I think your best choice for an AI-free operating system may be Linux Mint. It's a very easy to use Linux distro, and in the past they've taken a stance against Canonical, again the company behind Ubuntu, implementing nefarious features into Ubuntu. So I trust them to stay AI-free well into the future. The web browser is another area that's been invaded by dangerous AI features. Both Chrome and Opera have AI features already, and Apple plan to add them to Safari in the near future. Furthermore, Firefox has AI integration in the works, and while it's only for accessibility purposes for the time being, it's likely that Firefox will have other AI features in the near future. It's also worth pointing out that Mozilla, the company behind Firefox, is heavily investing in AI. Since all of the main web browsers either have or will have AI features, it's safe to assume that they'll make it downstream to browsers based on these browsers too. So I think it's fair to say that we can expect AI features in browsers such as LibreWolf as well. Thankfully, however, the developers of Vivaldi, a high-profile browser based on Chrome, have stated that they will not be including any AI features in their browser making them the only browser company that I'm aware of to take this stance. Given Vivaldi's anti-AI stance, I think the best bet for avoiding AI in your web browser is to switch to Vivaldi. If you're not a fan of Vivaldi, which is fair since it is a bit cluttered and it isn't entirely open source, then perhaps a smaller independent open source web browser will be a good fit for you since they're also unlikely to implement any AI features. Some of these browsers include Pale Moon, Falcon and Gnome Web. My personal favourite of those three is Gnome Web since it has a very modern, almost Apple-like user interface. But I think most people will prefer Pale Moon since it's available on most operating systems and is surprisingly fast and stable. Predictably, most search engines have also been infested by AI. Google, Bing and DuckDuckGo 
all have infamously bad AI features, and even smaller search engines such as Mojik, Brave Search, Ecosia, Quant, and others still have intrusive AI features. The simplest way to use the search engine without AI is to install a browser extension that blocks the AI generated results from displaying on Google. Unfortunately though, there isn't yet a similar extension for other search engines, as far as I know anyway. Plus, you would ideally be using something without any AI features to begin with. To that end, I found three different search engines that don't have any AI features. The first two, Google and Searchsung, are both open source search engines that show you results from other sites without tracking or AI features. Google pulls results from Google and Searchsung from too many places to even try and list. If you want a search engine with its own index, meaning that it doesn't pull data from other search engines, you could try Stract. Impressively, it's open source and has no AI features, which is unlike any other search engine that has its own index. However, it's unfortunately still in beta, and I haven't found its search results to be very good. But your mileage may vary, and presumably Stract will improve with time. I think for most people though, the most usable AI-free search engine is going to be Google. It has a familiar and uncomplicated user interface, and it has results that are just as good as Google's, since that's exactly where it gets its data from. Another area that has unsurprisingly been dominated by AI is the Office Suite. Microsoft Office has recently added a feature that creates documents for you using generative AI. Frankly, this feature just comes across as plagiarism to me. Another Office Suite that recently gained AI features is WPS Office, who are actually advertising their AI as being capable of everything from translation to writing poetry, which is actually kind of terrifying and will absolutely cause many translators and poets to lose work. Thankfully, however, the free, open source, and frankly just downright excellent Office Suite, LibreOffice and OpenOffice both don't have scary AI features. They're also free of cost, unlike Microsoft Office, which is another nice bonus. Seriously, Microsoft, how is Microsoft Office not bundled with Windows yet? The last area that's been dominated by AI that we're going to be talking about today is creative software. An example of creative software with AI features is Photoshop, which can now generate uncanny images for you using undoubtedly stolen training data. Adobe have also invested very heavily in AI, which is ironic because Adobe's customer base are the creatives who AI will soon put out of business. Thankfully, however, there's a thriving community producing free and open source creative software that is completely free of AI nonsense. For some quick examples, I'd recommend Krita as an alternative to Photoshop, Caden Live as an alternative to Premiere Pro, Inkscape as an alternative to Illustrator, and Darktable as an alternative to Lightroom. There really are too many good open source creative tools to list here. All of the programs that I've listed here are also free of cost. Furthermore, I've used many of these programs myself and can personally vouch for them. So in conclusion, those are some AI-free alternatives to some popular software. I hope that you try some of them out for yourself and hopefully they'll stay AI-free well into the future. Unfortunately, avoiding AI is getting increasingly more difficult, but if more people switch to the software that I've mentioned in this video, then hopefully it'll start to become easier again as more companies take an AI-free stance after seeing that more and more people are rejecting AI. With that said though, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed watching it, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Assuming the AI botnet hasn't taken over by then. Thanks for watching.